range. The first test is a Weber test. Weber test is actually a test for later lateralization. You briskly strike the tuning fork between the index and the thumb and allow the tuning fork to vibrate and then place the tuning fork at the forehead or any part in the midline. Rini test is used to compare air conduction with bone conduction. First, you set the tuning fork into vibration and put the base of the tuning fork at the mastoid tip behind the ear. And when the patient can no longer hear the sound, you transfer the fork of the tuning fork in front of the ear and ascertain as to whether the patient still hears the sound. Normally, air conduction is longer than bone conduction. Examination of the nose requires the use of a nasal speculum. Hold it with the thumb on the joint, the index finger free to steady it on the patient's nose, and the rest of the fingers on the stem proper to hold the speculum. Insert the speculum about one centimeters from the vestibule, closed and remove it slightly opened so as not to pull out any vibrisse. Always try to open the stem or tines in an upward action and not down into the floor of the nose. For children, simply lifting the tip of the nose may suffice, though pejeric speculums are also available. Look at small areas successively such as the vestibule, the mucosa, the nasal septum, and the lateral wall of the nose. Anterior rhinoscopy will only allow visualization up to the level of the middle turbinate. Pointers in anterior rhinoscopy are as follows. Always decongest the nose with 0.25% ephedrine sulfate so that all the structures can be seen. Usually, the middle and inferior turbinates are well seen. So with the middle meatus, occasionally the superior meatus. Superior turbinate is difficult to see. Notice the septum. Are there deviations? Discharge. Where is it from? In sinusitis of frontal, maxillary, and anterior ethmoid sinuses, there is drainage from the middle meatus. Polyps usually arise from the ethmoid air cells and thus from the middle meatus. In allergies, 
one may rarely see the classical pale mucosa of the turbinates. The common mistakes done during anterioscopy are as follows. Failure to adjust his or her head position to keep light sharply focused. Opening the nasal speculum too little. The speculum should be opened as completely as the nose will permit. Failure to tilt and turn the patient's head with the right hand to see all the parts of the nose. And lastly, failure to use vasoconstrictors. This is the examination of the oropharynx. We ask the patient to sit, relax, ask the patient to open the mouth wide, breathe through the mouth regularly in a relaxed manner. The tongue is depressed with a wooden tongue depressor, making sure not to touch the posterior pharynx to avoid gag reflex. The mouth is examined. The tongue is examined. The patient is asked to stick out the tongue and elevate the tongue to be able to see and examine the floor of the mouth. This is how we do our posterior rhinoscopy. The patient is seated in a relaxed manner. Again, the mirror is heated and tested with, for its warmth. The patient is asked to open the mouth. The head mirror is focused in the oral cavity. The tongue is depressed and the patient was asked, was, is asked to breathe through the mouth initially and then the patient is now asked to breathe through the nose. The mirror is inserted in the oral cavity behind the uvula and the posterior coena and nasopharynx is visualized. Common mistakes done during posterior rhinoscopy. Failure to depress the tongue adequately so that there is insufficient space to place the mirror. Failure to focus his light sharply on the mirror. This is how you do an indirect laryngoscopy. Patient is seated, relaxed. Before the examination, the mirror is heated to prevent fogging. In this case, we will use the heat coming from the electric bulb. We test the warmth of the mirror by putting it against the back of your hand so that you don't advertent, inadvertently burn the patient. Ask the patient to open the mouth. Focus your head mirror. Ask the patient to stick out the tongue. I will grasp the tongue with a piece of gauze and hold the tongue firmly. Ask the patient to breathe through the mouth. 
and say ah. Ah. The ringel mirror is placed inside the mouth, and as the patient breathes through the mouth, I ask the patient to say e. E. Open your mouth and say e. 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 Common mistakes done during indirect laryngoscopy. Failure to explain what the examiner intends to do before doing it. Failure to position the patient properly. Failure to focus the light brilliantly on the mirror. Does not elevate the uvula and the soft palate with the back of the mirror. Do not insist on a prolonged high-pitched E. In the next few scenes, we would like to introduce to you some of the newer technologies present at UERM to help in the diagnosis of ear, nose, and throat diseases. Video otoscopy allows us to document changes of the external auditory canal, tympanic membrane, and the middle ear. Video rhinoscopy gives us a magnified view of the structures of the nasal cavity and the nasopharynx. Video laryngoscopy enables us to have a magnified view of the larynx, making it easier to diagnose early diseases such as cancer, vocal cord nodules, and polyps.